With the release of 5.4, we now finally have the ability to create real-time PCG. And while we could have technically created it before in 5.3, the actual packaging of it didn't work. But now, finally, we can create it, use it in real time, and actually package it together. So we'll be creating this right here, which is basically just a small little forest and a platform. And when we get onto this platform, it regenerates the entire forest and the platform goes to a new location where you have to go through it and find the new spot. And here it is again. And if we go on top of it, you'll see it all really quickly regenerates. And now the platform has moved to a new location. So I'll go ahead and show you how to create this with PCG and a little bit of blueprints. So here we are in a brand new level. And if you haven't yet, go to edit plugins and search PCG to enable procedural content generation framework, make sure it is enabled and restart. But once you're ready, we just need a couple of things, starting with the actual platform that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and right click, go to blueprint class and create ourselves an actor. And this is just going to be our BP platform. Now with it open, we're going to need just a couple of things, starting with a simple cube. Now this is going to be the base of our platform, but I don't want it to be quite this big. So let's modify the scale of it. Let's make it five by five, but only 0.2 in height. So it's going to be quite narrow in that regard. Now I want to swap this out for a different material, but nothing comes up when I search basic. And in this case, all you need to do is go to settings here in the content browser and turn on engine content. You might want to turn on plugin content as well. So you have access to everything. But now if I come here and search basic, you can see I get a few different basic assets that I can go ahead and grab from the templates directory of the engine directory. So I'll just make this orange. And the other thing we're going to want is just some kind of box collision so we can actually walk inside of it and that will be the trigger point. So I'll go ahead and add ourselves a box collision. Now I'll move it up into the sky a little bit by 100 units and then I'll set the box extents to be 250 by 250 by 100. I want to attach it to the scene root so I'm going to hold left click and move it on top of default scene root and then let go and select attach. And you can see the actual position got offset again. So I'll go ahead and put it back up to 100. And there you go. You can see it is now pretty much on top of it. And this is going to be our base platform. Now for now, this is going to be good enough, but of course we're going to need to set up some more things. So let's begin by putting this platform into the level here. And if I go ahead and just play, you can see it is now quite large. And if you want, you can, of course, make this bigger or smaller for your needs. So now we're going to need two things. We're going to need the PCG graph and the blueprint that holds it. So I'm going to right click and just search PCG and grab ourselves a PCG graph. This is going to be our PCG underscore forest. And I'm going to right click, create a new blueprint class, make it actor and call this BP underscore forest. In my case, I'm creating a spline based setup. If you want, you can use a volume and just project it onto the landscape. Lots of options for what you want to do. This is just a basic demo to kind of show a way of doing this. There's of course a magnitude of different ways of doing it depending on your use case. So with these two files created, let's go ahead and open BP forest. And now we're going to need a couple of things here. So I'm going to start by adding ourselves a spline and then I'm just going to come out and drag this point out and hold alt and drag out a few more points. And then I'm going to just search for closed and make this a closed loop. And if you want to, you can hold control shift and select all the points and just right click and change this to linear if you want to be more of a box shape. In my case, I'm going to be using this on top of the actual base layout, which is going to be more boxy. So I'll make them all linear. With that, we're good with the spline. And now we just need to add our PCG graph that we created. So I'll go ahead and add our PCG component. And in the graph here, I'll go ahead and put our PCG forest. Now on this PCG graph, by default, it is generate on load for the generation tree. Trigger. We want to generate it whenever we want to have it actually update. So instead of generate unload, I'm going to select it and select generate on demand, which generates only when requested. Example via blueprint, which is pretty much what we want. So I'll go ahead and select it and we're good here. And now what we can do is just come out into the air here and drag out our BP forest. And you can see there's our actual setup. And I'm just going to put it out here, move the points around. So it kind of covers the entire bit of this square. Of course, make it any size you want. Now that we have this, let's go to our actual graph and we can start setting this up. So to start with, we can go right click and get spline data and sample it with a spline sampler. Now for the spline sampler, instead of on spline, we're going to do on interior. We're going to check unbounded. I'm going to change this interior sample spacing to 500. And then I'm going to do a transform points. And this is going to move them around randomly. So I'm going to offset them by negative and positive 250 in the X and Y. So that way it has a nice 500 unit range in both. We don't want it kind of moving up and down because in my case, I know the trees are a little bit, have that kind of bottom that is designed for use for landscapes RVT. So it looks a little bit odd 
kind of all the way at the proper bottom level, I will go ahead and just offset it just a little bit between negative 5 and negative 10. We also want to rotate these trees around, so I'm going to rotate them on 360 degrees, get 0 and 360 on the Z. So if I go ahead and select this and just press D to sample the points, you can see already we're getting a lot of these points, and it's great because we're now having a lot of these, but as you see, some of them are also appearing inside of a little platform here, and we want to remove those points. So to remove those points is quite simple. Let's right click and get actor data. And what we're going to do is get all of our platforms in the level. In case you will have multiple, this will do it nicely. So instead of actor self, we want to check all world actors. And instead of by tag, you want to do it by class. And now we can specify the class. You can do the drop down and select it this way. But what I like to do is just come here, select it and press the arrow. So, you know, it's exactly this version. In case you have things named very similarly, you don't need to kind of look through them. Or if you have a lot of things, your level, it's going to be hard to go down the entire list. So this makes it a little easier. But now that we have this, all we need to do is grab ourselves a difference node. And on the difference, instead of minimum, it's going to be binary. So it just basically removes those points entirely. And we're going to plug that difference in and we can go ahead and sample it. And you can see the points are not overlapping. And if I move this, you can see it removes the points wherever it overlaps. So we're not going to have any trees inside of here, which is perfect. The final thing is I want to actually reduce the amount of points. So if I just drag out of here and search noise, there is the attribute noise from 5.3 and the density noise from 5.2, but really all they have done is added in this density noise and it's still an attribute noise, but it just automatically sets up density as your input and puts it back into density. It's the same node as if you were to do attribute noise, you could see the only difference is here in the input source, it just automatically sends density for convenience. But now we have attribute noise, we could go ahead and do a density filter and filter out some of these points. Now I want to remove like 70% of them. So I'll do 0.7 to 1. That's all we're going to keep. And then I'm going to use a static mesh spawner and spawn in our trees. So I said static mesh spawner. I'll add some entries and plug in some trees. So here we go. I've plugged in some European beach trees, which you can get for free on the actual marketplace. They are by Megascans. They're just not available at the Quixel Bridge, as I found out. So with these two now piped in, you can see we now have quite a lot of trees. And if I go ahead and play, there's our trees. And you can see... We now have our platform. Now, of course, nothing happens when I come into it. It doesn't move. The trees don't regenerate, but we're now getting somewhere. So now that we have these trees all set up, let's add in the small foliage. For the shrubs and the small foliage, I'm going to basically duplicate the spline point sampler. And instead of 500, 100, I'm going to do it 75, 75. I'm going to get the same spline point data. I'm going to transform the points pretty much the same way. But the only difference is here, instead of one to one, I'm going to change the scale between 0.5 and one. So that way I have a little bit of variation in height. And we can do the same thing here. We can have it scale between, let's say, 0.7 and 1.2. So have some of them are going to be smaller, some of them are going to be bigger. And now we want to make sure that the actual grass and bushes that we spawn don't intersect with the trees. So I'm going to grab this difference node and duplicate it over. The source is going to be our transform points. And what we want to cut out is basically these points and the platform. So what I'm going to do is grab out of this points node and grab ourselves a merge points. I'm going to merge those points with this actor data. Now, at the current moment, this actor data, I've left it on parse actor components. We really don't need to parse all the components. We can just do get single point, which means we don't longer need this point and we can just drag it right through. Because if I sample this just by pressing D, you can see it is now getting the entire bounding box because we do have that platform and we have the hitbox. So it is grabbing the full bounds of it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sampling it and take this merge points and put them into the differences. And now from here, I can grab ourselves a static mesh spawner and populate it with the bushes that we want. And if I come down, you can see it has now populated this entire bottom area with saplings. Now we're still using this grid on the ground and I'm just going to replace this. I'm going to select it. And I have just a simple mega scans material here that I'm going to apply to it with some, some leaves and some grass. So now when we go ahead and play, it just looks a little bit better than it did before. But of course, now we still need to set up this platform from doing something. If you're enjoying the video so far, I would love to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new for our awesome tutorials like this. Let's get back to it. We can now go to this platform again and let's set up the actual event graph. So with the box selected here on the top left, I can right click on it and add event on component begin overlap or with it selected, I can scroll down in the detail panel down to these events section and I can just click on component begin overlap. Either one will work. Now, I want to make sure that this only happens when the player actually interacts with it and nothing else. 
instead of checking that it's the actual blueprint of the player, what I'm going to do is with this box selected, instead of overlapping all dynamic here in the collision settings, I'm going to select custom. I'm going to ignore everything except the pawn that I am going to overlap. So effectively, I don't care about anything except characters. And now with pawn actually overlapping, I need to make sure it is the player character that I'm going to be checking. In case you do have AI running around, you don't want it to trigger it by AI, only the player. So to do that is quite simple. Out of other actor, drag out. And if you turn off context sensitive, you can search for is player controlled. And if you select is player controlled, it'll grab you an instigator and then this Boolean. Check if it is a player controlled thing. So assuming that the thing that is actually overlapping it is player controlled, we can go ahead and do something with it. Now, if you had, for example, a wavy landscape, you could, for example, do a random line trace somewhere and grab the point. But since in my case, it's all a flat surface, I'm just going to move the platform somewhere else on overlap. So I'm again, overlap true. We're going to say set actor location. We're going to be setting itself. And then new location, I'm going to right click and split and the location X will be a random float in range between negative 3,500 and 3,500. And we're going to do the same thing in Y. So it's going to go somewhere in this area. So now that it's teleporting, let's go ahead and regenerate our graph. To get access to our graph, because it's already in the level, I'll go ahead and add a variable. And this is going to be our BP forest. And the type here will be BP underscore forest. And we need this to be an object reference. And you want to expose it by hitting the eye icon here. So with this reference, I can drag it out and hold control to get the get node. Now make sure context sensitive is on and then you can search for get PCG to get the PCG graph that you had. And from here, we can drag out and search for generate. Now with the generate there, let's go ahead and plug it in and check on force. And basically what this does is it makes sure it regenerates. If, for example, you had this not generate to begin with, and then you try to generate it, it wouldn't work. It only works when it is already generated to kind of regenerate it. Force is a good way of just making sure it always generates. Now, this is great, but this is just going to regenerate it with the exact same setup, but the platform actual overlap will be fixed. Now, before I test this, I need to select our platform and select under BP Forest, our BP Forest here in the dropdown, and it is good. Now, in case you do forget to do it, it will throw you an error. So, for example, if I clear this and have nothing selected and I play and I come here, you can see that it goes ahead and disappears and press escape. It now says access none. So you can just select it and you'll be good. Or what you can do is make it so nothing happens if it is not valid. And the way you can do that is by selecting this BP force, right clicking it and converting to a validated get. And we're going to put that right before the set actor location. So it is going to check that it is valid. And then assuming it is valid, it is going to do the set actor location and generate the graph. If it is not valid, we can have it go print string set the text color to red and let's have it happen for like five seconds and just state invalid BP forest selected on platform. So now if I go ahead and clear it and actually step on top of it, nothing happens. And in the top left, you can see it says invalid. So let's go ahead and select it. And now with it all selected and everything's working, we can come on top of it and you can see the spot kind of filled in, but it didn't actually change anything. The forest hasn't moved. If I come here, you can see it's not really doing what we want because it's not changing the seed of it. We need to modify the seed of the entire thing so it regenerates the entire place. So to do that is really simple. Right before this generate, you can drag out of the PCG graph and search for set seed. And we want to set the seed right between these two here. Now, if you want to always stay consistent, you can set a specific seed. But in my case, I want to always be a random one. So random integer in range is what we're going to be doing. And between zero, and you can just pick a quite large number, something like that. And it's just going to pick a random seed and then generate with that seed. So now if I play, I can go in here and you can see immediately regenerated and it has a new setup. And now if I run around, we can go find the platform again. And there's our platform hiding in the corner. We can go and step on it. And as I do, you can see the forest has quickly regenerated and we have a completely new layout for it. But now we have this kind of little game where we can go ahead and find the platform and have it generate a new location each time. So you could do something similar to this where you can have a new layout and kind of do those old school Slenderman type games where you maybe need to find certain pages. But instead of 
actually only the pages being in specific locations, you can have, as soon as you find a page, the entire environment changes, and now you have to go through an entirely new procedural setup and so it becomes a little more dynamic as you play through it. And as always, the project files are going to be available on my Patreon, where you can join these wonderful people here that support what I do. It really means a lot and helps me out tremendously. And if you'd like to join the community, the links to the Discord are down below. Or if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you again to my Patreons, and let's get back to it. But again, the main thing with 5.4 now is you can package this and actually publish it before you couldn't. So you can actually make a full game, have it all run in real time and while it has been very performant for really quick swapping in my case this is entirely dependent on how many points you're trying to generate in between each load if i for example crank up the numbers to 10 times higher for the number of points this will not be a more of an instantaneous swap it might take a fraction of a second a second to actually generate the new version so to keep that in mind that depending on how big of an area you regenerate in one go will depend on that load time, which of course correlates to your hardware. Now, if you're interested in other real-time applications of BCG, check out this video right here where I show you how to start using it for an actual mob spawner.